Okay. Cold War. Cold War is a stage in history, stage in world history, where some events or some processes are understood in terms of conflict between two countries, USA and USSR. Okay. Many events are explained in terms of the conflict between the two. Not that there was any war, there was no war, and that is why it was called Cold War. It's called Cold War. And uh, Cold War is outcome of World War II. Certain things happened after World War II that resulted in this Cold War. Why didn't it become hot? It was one very simple reason. Both had atomic weapons by 1949. USA by 1945 and USSR by 1949. Because of the atomic weapons, uh, actual war could not be possible. So there was no World War III. We don't know how things would have been if not for atomic weapons. So full-fledged wars between great powers became impossible after the nuclear weapons. Okay, so that explains Cold War. But how did this start? How did USSR, USA was powerful. See, the power shifted uh, like this. Britain was powerful and it had a huge empire. Then USA became powerful by the end of World War II because Britain was losing colonies and exhausted by World War II. And USSR did not have colonies, but in a particular way, USSR came to occupy a huge empire. So much was added to Russia. Okay. Uh, why so much was added to USSR uh, as a sphere of influence? How did this happen? Okay. Here, I would like to tell you something and... Uh, and uh, want to reflect on whether what happened should have happened at all. Let us look at this case. There is Europe and say there is Germany. Germany. USSR came like this through Eastern Europe and finally to Berlin. And allies came like this. And Berlin fell. Okay. USSR came this far. Now Berlin fell. War was over. Now tell me, once the war was over, what should happen to the countries? over which these foreign armies uh, traveled or conquered, occupied, what would happen? I think 
we can say that after the war was over all the foreign countries should go back ussr should go back soviet army should go back to ussr american armies to arm to america french to france british to britain and uh, all countries should be free that is uh, sensible but do you know what happened in what can be called the tragedy of world history ussr came to this point and allied powers agreed that direct in a way that ussr could have control over all those areas so how could that be just it was true that ussr lost a huge man power played a very important role in uh, defeating hitler but does it mean uh, the world should agree to all the areas that uh, traveled through uh, to itself because that meant that uh, you are handing over one is handing over the countries from nazi occupation to soviet occupation how can that ever be a proposal unfortunately that was what happened as a result of the conferences between three great powers uh one one of the conference was yalta took place in february 1945 attended by these three great powers as rep- britain represented by churchill america by roosevelt and ussr by stalin yalta was in russia or ussr <clears throat> and, uh, and later one more conference conference was held the same year in potsdam germany between july 17th and Feb- august 2 and during this time or by this time uh roosevelt died and replaced by truman elections were held in britain churchill lost power and utterly joined so the early beginning part was represented by churchill and later part was represented by utterly in the same conference and uh, result of this conference potsdam and germany potsdam and uh, yalta was that ussr would have control over those areas but was expected to hold free elections but it should be obvious that ussr would not hold free elections and so it would lead to its occupation okay it was true in the world war 2 of the total 50 million dead half of them civilians 20 million are from ussr so ussr played a very important role in defeating hitler okay but it did not it should not mean that uh, you hand one should hand over uh, the areas to ussr and that's what happened okay
So all the areas that USSR ran through the World War II came under its occupation, which in effect meant one transferred the countries from potential Nazi occupation to Soviet occupation. And uh, unlike in the case of Treaty of Versailles, these particular uh, conferences of Yalta and Potsdam were not critically looked at by history textbooks, by standard, in, in standard history textbooks. Okay. I think these conferences should have been held as uh, great blunders. But very recently, in 2005, US President George Bush compared the Alta Conference to Chamberlain's concessions to Hitler at Munich in 1938, which were called appeasements, describing it as one of the greatest wrongs of history. Okay. And Churchill seemed to know at that point itself that something wrong was going on. Churchill wrote to his wife at his time, the misery of the whole world appalls me. I fear increasingly that new struggles may arise out of those who are successful in it. Churchill understood that we were handing over huge territories to Stalin. But what did Stalin think Everyone imposes his own system as far as his army can reach. So Stalin thought, I, we came this far, so this is ours. And they came that far, so it is theirs. The problem with this statement is, they were not sticking to the areas they conquered, but Stalin would stick to. Stalin could impose his system by force, but allies did not impose their system by force on other countries. West Germany was free. East Germany was not free. It is not that East Germany was communist and West Germany was democratic and so different political systems. No. West Germany chose to be democratic and East Germany was forced to be communist. So, uh, uh, Alta and conference and the succeeding conference in a way handed over the huge part of the world to Stalin's Russia, making it uh, a vast empire which because of which it could challenge USA and keep millions of people under bondage. Okay, now you tell me what you think of this. Naveen, did you follow? Sir, I joined little late, I partially followed. Hmm. But last few statements are enough. Uh, yes, sir. So like the blunders of those conferences, but let, let me tell you, did you read anywhere, I mean, because I was shocked, that this was a blunder? Mm, no, sir. Huh. I was shocked, really. Mm. I was reading books written in 2010, 2015. How can just you hand over to Hitler? So do you know that is why I searched for is this uh, Alta conference fair? Then I some other article I came across Bush Bush statement and then uh, historians judgment. So I posted that article also to to the wake uh, later. But I was shocked. Because it is through this process only Russia became so powerful. Isn't it? 
right i mean does it make sense, any sense the uh, peace conference should mean the end of the war and uh, uh, people should have control over their countries isn't it ussr entered to free the countries from nazi occupation fine but just after after freeing from nazi occupation do you have the right to occupy you don't how can the world agree to me it's very simple i mean i want you to say i mean uh, i want you to think uh, and this should be settled what do you say now i don't know whether it was their plan to reform or they had uh, they visualized this way what Meaning, how did they how did they visualize uh like see uh, as realist things that they wanted to gain out of this war again they don't who, wanted to who wanted to gain the parties involved in the war okay how are britain and uh, america gaining in this they were just handing over the countries to stalin sir they got a control of germany also right they divided the germany they divided the german but they, in whatever the territories they got they are giving it to the people but stalin was not giving to the people he was taking it to himself how can there be parity between the two right exactly that is how books were written and that is how people were told they divided among themselves what what did the allies do and what did the uh, what did stalin do stalin kept to himself whereas others gave freedom so how can there be parity between these two so whatever was agreed to be given to stalin it was occupation whatever allies got it was freedom there cannot be parity between the two why there was no parity because democracy is choice communism was not choice communism was occupation democracy was freedom sir so, so in another way like these allies were they were not worried about like how uh, stalin is going to handle stalin would take how would he handle stalin no, would take uh, see for example according to the conferences the condition was that stalin would conduct free elections but obviously in fact stalin one textbook says that how did they ever think that i would hold free elections <laughs> <laughs> stalin found them naive yes sir but suppose if they did not agree to stalin or to that uh, exactly or to that condition they should not have agreed and ready for the battle which they did not want that is where they were wrong hmm. it should be made very very clear that this is unequal we are handing over the territories to them and you are not likely to hand over so your season occupation and our season not an occupation it is this clarity that should be there in the beginning correct sir but their intention was to defeat the germany like it is not a war between us and ussr as long as germany is defeated that they are is done. true but by the around the end there was always a war between communism and the uh, democracy um uh, ussr was not approached before ussr wa help was refused so only after hitler invaded ussr ussr became a friend so it is not that they suddenly discovered ussr as an enemy no during the 1917 Revol revolution itself they didn't like and they didn't like stalin so so they treated it as evil and how could they hand over the whole territory to them to ussr so the idea that the four great powers divided doesn't make sense there is no parity whatever was given to stalin 
was for occupation. Whatever was given to these countries was not an occupation. It was giving to the people. This clarity should have been there in the beginning. East Germany was being ruled by USSR, but West Germany was not being ruled by anybody. So the idea that we were dividing the country according to our ideologies doesn't make sense. It was freedom versus occupation. That clarity should have been there in 1945, so clear. So as uh, Churchill writes, it was an appeasement policy. They didn't want to confront Stalin, but he should have been confronted. And more so by 1945, at the time of these conferences, they didn't have the bomb, but they, both of them knew that the ball of them knew that the, the work towards the bomb was going on. And in 1945, August, they bombed. So USA was so powerful and USSR didn't have any bomb. USSR bomb came in 1949. So, Atli and Truman, I think they didn't really understand what was going on. So, basically, the idea of Berlin was divided among great powers, Germany was divided, it doesn't make sense. It was not being divided. Whatever was being given to Stalin was for occupation. That clarity should have been there. If that clarity was there, all this Cold War would not have taken place. It would have been simply USSR and nothing more. Not the world divided into, into two. So I would say this is uh, so much of irresponsibility. Just because uh, armies come to that point, then you give all that territory, then uh, then where is peace? That is not the end, way to end war, especially when the when the allied forces were far more powerful. Hmm. Gayatri, what do you say? Does this make sense? Yes, sir. But then, uh, I agree with everything that was blunder and all. Mm. Uh, how do you think uh, the past legacy of uh, settling things impacted this conference? Because the idea of uh, uh, like past legacy of how uh, how far you reach is your control. But it never how far you reached how how that that was never there. Which in I mean, uh, if it is a fight between two countries, maybe I mean I don't know. Uh, but everything I feel no how like... I we don't know how it was settled, but but was World War One settled like that? World War One was not settled like that. Mm -hmm. Your army reaches to the various points, to do whatever the army runs, does that become its area? No. I don't think that is the those are the rules of any war. Army reaches a point and then def defeats and then after that army goes back and imposes certain terms on the defeated country. Also, you told that Russia was not at all powerful at that time. Not powerful at that time. So why did they run, escape from that? They didn't, they didn't see what kind of blunder they were making. They just didn't want to proceed. They didn't see what kind of world they were creating. Just how can you say you hold free elections? Wow. Why will he Why will he hold free elections? It's too obvious. He never held free elections anywhere. Communism sir, he, can, he, can he, never he, come uh, in a country where there are free elections. Sir, so mm -hmm. this is simply appeasement. Churchill's description was right. It was appeasement, but comparing with Munich is wrong because uh, Munich it is called, I mean, the different way the reading of Munich is possible. Mm, but this is uh, very blatant, just handing over the territory. 
I think if we understand the like basic instincts as we say of man, we should not be doing it. Hmm? The way, if we understand the human nature, oh. the basic instincts, we should not be uh, agree any country like. But that is how we treat. Uh, that is how we think any nation would behave. That is what said. Hmm. But that is what that is what these uh, people are. They doing. should not Suppose, have handed over. They are handed. supposed to think like that. What else? Hmm. That is what. That oh. only. I think That's everything. Then you, said, you, wow, wow, how can you think the Stalin will hold free elections and people will say no? I think we every, want democracy and Stalin will go back. That is what everything should be evaluated from that basic instincts of human. Yeah, that's about power. Yeah, power. That's and, about power. And that uh, that conference and, should have. No, essentially, not... they didn't think it was freedom versus occupation. They thought it is simply the books as books, right? For these four powers are there, then divided. What division? It was an unequal division. Whatever was given to France, America, and uh, um, Britain was given to people. Whatever was given to Stalin was taken away from the people. So there cannot be parity. That is about Berlin. That is about Germany. So the entire Eastern Europe uh, was handed over to Stalin. and that as it is 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 can this be a treaty not that he got it by war that suppose this is supposed to be a treaty right treaty treaty meant uh, as per the agreement of other countries how could they agree had stalin invaded on his own without world war 2 and occupied all these countries would these people keep quiet no they won't have kept quiet then why should they keep quiet now what do you say navin sir i think us knew it uh, stalin will not uh, have elections exactly but, but i don't know why they look go went for an appeasement appeasement what kind of, what kind of calculation they had it is just that they didn't want to continue the war they didn't see what kind of mistake they were making Okay. Maybe. Are they wanted to postpone the war? No, they were tired of World War Two, and it is not that they they were preparing for War Three. They were tired, but on the whole, it was a great responsibility. This as a result of a treaty. So what happened? Basically, they went all out to contain Stalin, contain Hitler. only to give it to stalin <laughs> isn't it i think I... they wanted to crush germany but only to make russia far more powerful so what was the point why did they fight What do you say, Karim? Are you following? Yes, sir. Hmm. Karim, other Karim. Sir, I think uh, hmm. at that time communism uh, was not uh, believed to be as bad. No, so, no, no, no. Would... Uh, no, no, no. USSR was taken as an evil from 1917 onwards, and Stalin was regarded as an evil. And Churchill said, uh, "If uh, uh, he said something like, uh, uh, if Hitler, if somebody is going to fight Hitler, I am going to make a. If devil is going to fight Hitler, I am going to make a case of how devil is a good one." That's what Churchill said. so i think churchill knew the mistake that's that was the thing see basically three people churchill understood but he didn't have power and maybe roosevelt was very sick he was to he was going to die within two months after the anta conference so the idea that they didn't know that uh, uh, this would be an evil uh, was was not true because so many things came out by that time
they had lot of spying extensive network they would of course know what was going on no yeah, then why they had to appease sir why they are not it is just i think they didn't understand really what was going on so the idea that you hold free elections is meaningless why will he hold hold free elections? who will opt for communism when free elections are held so on textbook rights hitler uh, stalin always thought it was a naive idea stalin felt that he was offering it as a propaganda i mean he felt why would they believe it but i think they really didn't believe if they really didn't believe then it is their mistake to accept if they believed then it, it was too, they were too naive so essentially you are just handing over the whole all the countries to stalin and how can that be a part of a treaty if that man won all those countries in a war and others were helpless that would be a different case but that didn't happen like that it 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 amounted to simply handing over the countries to him so that's why george bush had to say in 2005 that too why the historians did not consider it a grave mistake i don't understand okay okay now next we will see how these two can two areas two areas came out completely differently okay now any questions on this okay okay <clears throat> see difference was if it came under allies um first of all they are free that is number 1 which means democracy okay people are choosing people choose their governments and this is about politics and next economic help which came under what was called marshall plan okay and then countries were integrated economic union and finally they became prosperous okay but if you are thinking in terms of power all these things make these countries closer to usa no doubt about this economic help was coming from us and trade was developing in such a way they would complement each other but in all this if you don't think in terms of between us and ussr but think in terms of the people they are free and they are prosperous so if usa is becoming powerful by promoting freedom and prosperity then that's good so 
So this is what this Truman Doctrine. Truman became president after Roosevelt died. Truman was the vice president who became president. But later, he also got elected as president. Um, so he proposed his, uh, uh, he, 1944, um, these institutions were to set, set up IMF and World Bank. These were called Bretton Woods Conferences. So, sorry, there was a Bretton Woods Conference, a conference at Bretton Woods, and IMF and World Bank were set up in 1944. Why, I mean, in 1944, this conference was held. Why? Because they were trying to see uh, <clears throat> how to avoid a situation that they faced after World War I, and also they learned certain lessons during Great Depression. So they believed that the countries should be helped. Uh, so, so nations, society should be developed by their governments and the government should be helped internationally. So certain international coordinating systems are needed. So they thought of IMF and World Bank. And then GATT, this about trade, came in 1947. So global institutions were developing that would promote trade, that would promote interconnectedness, and that would contribute to prosperity. <clears throat> and more directly, in 1947, Marshall Plan was announced. Marshall was Secretary of State of US for reconstruction of Europe. While Stalin was busy taking the equipment and industry from East Germany to Russia, US was helping the Western Europe to develop itself. Okay. So this was about economy. And then Integration of Europe would take place in 1951, European Coal and Steel Authority established. Okay. And then in security terms, 1947, Truman Doctrine, a policy to support free people anywhere. Okay. So Truman Doctrine came after handing over the entire Eastern Europe to Stalin. So American president now says he will defend a free world after losing so much world to Stalin. But in 1949, Soviets exploded the atomic bomb because of which Soviet Soviets could not be defeated in a war. 1949 is a defining moment in the world. And then in 1955, Warsaw Pact was formed, as opposed to alliance, US-led alliance. <clears throat> So, uh, this is how US tried to change the world after losing the Eastern Europe and Eastern Germany and part of Berlin to USSR. It appears that it realized and now it didn't want to lose any more ground to the USSR. Okay. Next step would be, what would Stalin do in the areas that he had control? Okay. Any questions on, on this? Sir? Uh, just one second. I mean, don't you think this is a different way of handling? Or you think I'm I'm completely very biased. You you are free. Hmm. Now, in. Uh, I think uh, 
those conferences help in a, in a way mm. it let the ussr rise mm. and then uh, avoided the dominance of uh, us over the entire world but what would us dominance mean if ussr was not there there would have been some other challenges europe would have been a challenger britain we don't know mm. but in fact usa did did have to do so many horrible things because of the ussr we don't know how how competition between two democratic countries uh, shaped the world we don't know but definitely we can't say if not for ussr usa would have been unchallenged it might not be true europe would have behaved differently mm. okay but let us look at east european countries they were in bondage and that was not fair isn't it yes sir hmm okay no my question is when usa the way usa was handling the countries defeated in war or destroyed in war was so different right economic right. prosperity trade and freedom and unification all that was good finally europe became prosperous under us leadership hmm right sir yes or no deepika what do you say Deepika. Yes, sir. Hmm. Sir, uh, what hmm. would have happened if US had gone for war? Huh? What would have happened if US had gone for war and not uh, given? Yeah. At least threaten you try that uh, yeah, whatever you occupied won't become yours, and uh, we don't know what would have happened. You should have tried. You should try that, right? You didn't, you didn't try. it need not be war it need not be war and particularly after atomic bomb explosion usa really was very powerful it could do anything to any country ussr did not have bomb by then but more importantly how can that be a peace treaty that cannot be a treaty that cannot be agreed upon thing because the agreement uh, amounted to uh, giving all nazi occupied areas to stalin occupation that can't be peace agreement yes, that is the point hmm what are the other options so other options is you just say you go <laughs> you go back to your borders that's all then the war is not at over go back to your borders just like we are going back to our borders sir did the us so hmm this is sir as any threat to themselves basically they didn't see they didn't have foresight and they didn't they didn't think much i think there was no i don't know why i mean definitely that is why we should regard it as a great blunder what is the rationale so hmm sir do uh, economic resources like natural resources also uh, take part in these treaties sir like distribution of uh, energy no they, they even wanted they reparations do. germany should pay reparations and so stalin uh, took away um, equipment from many industrial plants from germany so it involved reparations yes sir okay. sir you, uh, we were discussing why but russia there are why reparations are... reparations only from germany but not the entire eastern europe right and for reparations maybe you need not occupy Sir, but uh, Russia would have a right to ask for repression from those countries as well in exchange for 
Uh, okay, you can get it can get reparation. But how, what do you say about Eastern Europe then? It has the right for reparations from part of Germany. Um, but how about uh, other East European countries? They didn't harm Germany. They didn't harm uh, Russia. They had nothing to do. Yes, sir, but uh, still uh, Russia had a cost and uh, they would be part of the repression. Whatever Russia but... lost, Russia lost due to Germany, not due to Poland, Hungary, Czechoslovakia. Why should all go to uh, occupation under Stalin? What did they do? There are so many countries, Bulgaria, Romania, Poland, Czechoslovakia, so many countries, Baltic states. How can so many countries be handed over to Stalin? So, to me, it's a very, very big blunder. I think basically they didn't have the clarity. I mean, at least people didn't have the clarity that division meant something like division. It, it's not really, it is it's a freedom versus occupation. Okay. So basically you took the countries from you protected from Hitler and uh, handed over peacefully to Stalin. That's what happened. Okay. So in my second presentation, I was saying the way U.S. treated uh, Europe. U.S. became powerful. That is true. But how did it become powerful? Through making others free and prosperous. And that is good. And voluntary association. Voluntarily. They are helping. And if a country can be great by helping other countries, it should be great. That is the way to greatness. Granted. If you want to be great by controlling others, by taking away their wealth, by keeping your army there, the world should not encourage that. So there is simply no parity between USA and USSR. One should be seen as an occupation. Okay. Sir, hmm. we see it as an occupation, like hmm. freedom versus uh, occupation. Hmm. Many see it as an ideological... Uh, um, I am that saying that difference. is wrong. That is wrong. That is what I am saying. That is wrong. That is a source of confusion. That is what Stalin said. What did he say? Everyone imposes, everyone <laughs> imposes his own system as far as his army can reach. Stalin is imposing his own system. America is not imposing his own, its own system. People will choose democracy. Democracy is not an imposition. Communism is an imposition. So comparing these two, equating these two is the first mistake. That is wrong. Yes, sir, history books say that hmm? the communism history, history books say that communism has contributed to prosperity for certain period. That is nice, but let people choose. Uh, so they let people know whatever shouldn't people choose or not campaign. Let people choose. Maybe the, then they did not have the belief in people choice as much as we have it now. No, it was not communists a, did not have. Others had, people were not asked. The first thing that the communists fear is that the people's opinion. So it's occupation versus freedom. 
you create a better system but people should ask for it isn't it <laughs> So failing to see that as an occupation is the blunder. So while America was helping West Germany, Hitler, uh, Stalin was doing something else to East Germany and to uh, Eastern Europe. Okay. Now. Next, we go to the next concept. I mean, is this part clear to you? Thank you. Now, okay. Uh, we will see <clears throat> what Soviets do or what Stalin does when one country comes under his control. This is called Sovietization, Sovietization, also called communization. Okay, Sovietization, communization. What does this mean? It means something like this. What is to be a communist country? Let us look at the dimensions economic dimension, land, first reforms, distribution, and next collectivization. This is land related issue. Distribution and collectivization. And second, industry. Very fast industrialization. And heavy industry. Why heavy industry? Because they want to develop the infrastructure for future. The present needs of the consumption are ignored. Okay. So focus on heavy industry, not on consumption. This two. And next and more, more important thing is political. What is political? No freedoms. No freedom of speech. No freedom of expression. No free media. No freedoms. And then one party. And strong police, secret police. Okay. So, loss of political freedoms, no free elections, one part. Economically, these are the things. But how does a Stalin go about imposing these things? <clears throat> Stalin's methods are not different from Hitler's methods. It's not different. How do they do? First, they will have some few supporters. And they may form a party. Okay. Next, what they do is under their occupation, they eliminate opponents. Criticism. 
and finally all many parties are checked out checked out okay and sometimes they join a coalition but finally they become one party by eliminating uh, uncomfortable people coalition and sometimes one small community one small party but one popular party these two will merge and it means these people will enter and then many others eliminated so finally one comes so uh, force all kinds of tricks media are fine are used in variety of ways by which they capture the political power and then they go for economic reforms sometimes simultaneously so this is how it becomes a communist state it means is also called stalinization but one difference between a satellite to ussr and ussr is that ussr follows an independent foreign policy whereas a satellite cannot so its foreign policy also is fixed part of warsaw pact which is a military alliance and it has to reject marshall plan can't take it no contacts with international institutions no trade so soviet model meant all these things a particular kind of agriculture particular kind of industry particular kind of media and then politics one party system no separation of powers like legislature and executive judiciary and on the top of it all this system is controlled by stalin this is what happens over a period of time maybe within 2 3 years happened in germany happened in poland and many other countries so within few years sovietization took place okay let us see certain countries uh some details about germany according to these conferences conference assigned part of germany to allied armies and this is one and also germans eastern border moved 100 miles west border moved like this and russia moved westwards so russia got 100 miles extra part of the conference part of the agreement and in 1947 british and american zones merged and uh, in 1949 may west germany formed out of three zones given to us britain and france 1949 but remember in this germany this is west germany this is germany berlin is within the east germany berlin is berlin berlin itself is divided first into four and after that two so but germany is embedded sir berlin is embedded in east germany and uh, stalin did not want uh, for some time controlled access of west germany to berlin 
So that led to what was called Berlin blockade in June 1948, when ground access to West Berlin was blocked, essential supplies airlifted for 11 months. And later, ground access was given. Okay. So this was how Berlin developed, uh, Germany developed, and this developed according to one way, and East Germany developed according to another way. And within the Berlin, USSR's Berlin or East Berlin developed in one way, and West Berlin developed in another way. This was about Germany. And in the East German part, Sovietization took place. Take another country, Poland. Here I am giving certain details of Poland. Poland was after Germany. So borders uh, moved meant uh, Poland lost huge part to Russia. This part lost to Russia. Hundred miles. But some part of Germany was added to Poland. So Poland's borders were changed. Going by its history, in 1939, Germany invades Poland. The Soviets invade from the east due to Hitler's Stalin pact. Why Soviets invade from the east? Because Hitler, as Hitler and Stalin agreed, Stalin would take some parts. Both divide Poland between them. Germany begins persecution of Jews. And then, even before the war ended, even before the war ended, in 1944, land redistribution was taking place and industry nationalization was taking place. These were all the parts of Sovietization, aspects of Sovietization. 1945, Poland's borders were set by Potsdam Conference. Poland loses territory to the Soviet Union, but gains some from Germany. In 1947, voter fraud and violence, Boleslaw Birt becomes president. And he is made to reject Marshall Plan. And then between 1948 and 53, thousands of opponents are eliminated. Even church had to curtail many of its, church was cut, curtailed in many, of, in many ways. So, Sovietization includes curbing religious activity. And then in 1950s, new plan with focus on heavy industry. Collective farm effort failed in Poland, but in other countries, Partly successful. I mean, different amounts of collectivization took place, but in Poland, uh, very little, or it failed. Industrialization took place and it helped. So, this is what happened in Poland. And the story of Poland is similar to the story of uh, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, and others, Bulgaria, Romania, and others. So this is how within few years, they became satellite countries and lost freedom. Okay. So this is a imposition of a particular model on all the occupied areas. Tell me, is this clear to you what it meant by Sovietization. <clears throat> hmm? <clears throat> Any questions? Hmm. Gayatri, any questions? So basically, uh, mini USSRs, but loss of foreign policy autonomy. People in USSR also don't have freedom. So it is not that they have freedom and these people don't have. Nobody has freedom. 
but uh, ussr can is not a satellite of any country but here they are even if there are independent leaders they can't uh, follow policies of their own choice okay tell me hmm anantarikam hmm ah okay yes sir it appears like the east europe was really unlucky to have hitler on one side what is that Stalin please 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 tell me hmm it appears like eastern europe was really unlucky with hitler on the stalin on either exactly place. yes they fell free only in 1990 very tragic story they were under occupation that is why i am saying that treaty is unfair it can it that's that's completely unreasonable so basically i mean i am able to say clearly based because most people think these are two systems they are not two systems one is an occupation and another is freedom they are not two systems it is it see if some people choose to be communist and some people choose to be democracy we should respect their choices people have the right to choose but that is not like that so there cannot be parity between the two are you following sir deepika ha raju please sir whose hmm. army is guarding these uh, germany and poland is, soviet is army their own army soviet or? army soviet ha hmm. but guarding from whom <laughs> people don't want that army so their threat was ussr only i mean if you use the word guarding in that sense okay so they lost freedom to ussr but of course ussr would say we are providing freedom from invasion by other countries but who are those countries which would invade them <laughs> so this is an unequal battle okay so then ha uh, uh, then if soviet army is guarding an whole eastern europe uh, comes under one political system uh, so no borders are relevant uh, no no they have their own countries they have their own arrangement but the model is same it is like that so bulgaria will have its own army romania will have its own army presidents are prime ministers but these are the basic elements of the model economic model political model religious model society model it is like that so force will be imposed on all the countries so you got it rajesh yes hmm okay and next uh, i'll just explain uh, one war cold that took place that was korean war and then we'll go back to uh, ussr and krushchev okay 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 korean war we are we keep hearing this war korean war took place between 1950 and 53 this is one war coming under cold war and before stalin's death or during stalin's time stalin died in 1953 
How did this war take place? In 1945, Korea had been divided between the Soviet and American forces in 1945. Uh, how did this happen? Japan was there. Japan was taken off, was defeated. And so Korea was divided. Okay. Um, and at 38th parallel, each established its client state. Okay. And something happened in 1950. There was no bit, nothing between 1945 and 1950. North Korea attacked South Korea. Why did North Korea attack? US Secretary of State at the time, he mentioned certain countries that USA would defend and South Korea was not included in the list. So North Korea thought that it would invade and Korean unification would take place under its leadership. It was a very clear act of aggression. United Nations Security Council prescribed collective action against North Korea. United Security Council could do this because USSR was not there to apply veto power. USSR was boycotting over UN refusal to accept communist China. USA did not give veto power to or UN membership to communist China. It gave to Taiwan. But UN force based on UN Security Council resolution, consisted of 50% of US and troops and 40% of South Korean troops. So essentially, it was a US mission. So you can say this is one major war uh, between USA and USSR during Stalin's era and after atomic bombs. Okay, General Douglas MacArthur moved his forces close to Chinese border. It means he successfully chased, uh, he undid North Korean invasion, but beyond that, he went towards China. You know, China was the northern border to Korea. And then Chinese rushed 2 lakh troops and pushed UN forces back. China by then was communist. So China felt invaded. And uh, finally, it was moved back. But coming to internal developments of US, uh, it was found that it was not American President Truman's decision, but the general's decision. He thought he should fight China and he wanted to make use of atomic bomb if needed, but Truman refused. It was Truman who used the bomb against Japan, first and last person to use. Uh, MacArthur wanted bomb to be used in this context, but Truman refused. And instead, in April 1951, Truman dismissed MacArthur. But at that time, president was not popular and the general was a hero. General was a hero, not, not for this, but for his participation in World War II. Okay. And by 1953, June, ceasefire was signed and 54,000 soldiers died. And by this time, Eisenhower became the president that year. So as we said, some clash points can be understood, conflicts can be understood in the context of Cold War. Korean War was one such uh, war. So by this time, Stalin died and a new era would come in USSR. And we'll see what it means. Now, before we enter Khrushchev's era, you can ask some questions. Hmm. Please tell me, are, is what is covered uh, so far clear to you? Karim, is it clear? Sir, North Korea attacking South Korea means uh, USSR attacking South Korea. Ah, exactly. 
simple like that yes ussr backed state attacking south korea american backed state but by that time there were no ussr troops and no usa troops there yes backed state hmm hmm kari so you follow he is she okay she was traveling okay fine hmm Deepika, any questions? No, sir. Fine. Next, we'll go to uh, Christian. <clears throat> okay. Can I go to the next section? Sir. Can I go to the next sec section, Christian? If you, if you have. Sir, just. Ah, uh, please. Sir, uh, sir, the, the, the joint action against North Korea mm. by UNSC was mm. uh, not approved. Russia did support. Uh, Russia supported afterwards, sir. Um, Russia backed, but uh, it was not a direct conflict. Russia supported. Okay, it was not a direct conflict. Sir, but uh, that's confusing, sir, because oh, North okay. Korea is backed by USSR. Uh, okay, why, why would it... we will uh, fine. I will go go through the details. Go to go through the details of to what extent USSR was there in that Korean War. Fine, okay. fine. I'll go through it. We'll come back to that. Next, any other question? Fine. Mm. Okay. Next, Khrushchev came to power. Nikita Khrushchev ruled between 1953 and 64. The Central Committee decided not to concentrate power in one person, and that is why uh, it uh, went for collective decision making during Khrushchev time. So Khrushchev. was never as powerful as stalin in fact stalin was after stalin nobody came as nobody came close to stalin in terms of accumulating power it was stalin who created that terror network and uh, nobody could come anywhere near that uh, but one very important thing that khrushchev did was in the year 1956 in february during the 20th soviet party congress he denounced stalin that was supposed to be a secret speech but the whole world got to know denouncing meant that he said so many people were purged unnecessarily so many people were killed and uh, it was a very clear criticism and he said we should move towards a better system stalin till then was being treated as a kind of a semi god not only in the ussr but also outside so khrushchev's denunciation shocked the world okay and also it shocked china communist country and then khrushchev also thought of making certain changes okay he said some freedom of expression would be allowed okay and then he said 
consumption should be increased he wanted what was called gaulish communism which meant to put meat on every table because otherwise in stalin's brand of communism focus on heavy industry focus on building up infrastructure and economy was not devoted to production of goods and services that would be immediately consumed so because of which standard of living was low but khrushchev wanted to change that situation and he wanted more consumption of goods and services okay uh, so that was how he wanted to go about but khrushchev genuinely believed in marxism as well as leninism his objection was only to stalin khrushchev did not think that ussr was an inefficient economic system or an inefficient political system you know he said that in, in 1961 he said ussr gdp would surpass that of us by 1980 so it showed that uh khrushchev was a devoted uh, communist mm, though so it means he was only opposed to stalin stalin and not the things uh, not ideological things okay uh, for example uh, his days some of his decisions included abolishing college entrance exam giving priority to those applying from factories making the state in his view more lower class oriented and students to have the experience of factory floor okay and then half of the remaining churches closed i mean the half of the unclosed ones also closed so this shows that he believed in communism um and then in agriculture he was for new strains of hybrid corn on uncultivated lands and tried decentralization of economic decision making something okay but one major difference between stalin and khrushchev was that uh, khrushchev also came to power uh, through certain maneuvering because he was not a naturally number 2 there was another number 2 very very powerful and uh, Uh, known for uh, very poor uh, track record in terms of uh, killing others so khrushchev feared that he might come to power and so khrushchev managed um, finally to have him um, removed so khrushchev played politics to come to power no doubt about it okay but when he came to power and after he came to power uh, he did not kill anybody so he drove out enemies but did not kill so that was question but what happened because of this uh, uh, denouncing stalin was that it shocked uh, russia china and then it gave hope to uh, some east european countries they also thought that maybe time came for certain changes okay so how did this take place is an issue take one country hungary 1956 1956 khrushchev time plus after denunciation of stalin okay this country was ruled since 1949 by stalin's puppets which included collectivization of agriculture heavy industry development and in 1956 secret police fired on protesting students against communist system and then army did not side with the government and uh, around that time 
ఇమ్రేన్ నాజే an anti stalinist came to power and till this there was also an inspiration from poland in poland also uh, one anti stalinist came to power because of the people's protests anti stalinist coming to power was approved or forced to be approved by christian so similar thing was happening in hungary in 1956 after what happened in poland and when naje came to power he requested the removal of soviet armed forces remember he was a communist only but anti stalinist but withdrew from warsaw pact and appealed to un for help so he was declaring a rebellion against the ussr and what what khrushchev did ussr invaded with 150000 troops and 2500 tanks thousands killed and neji and and janos kader regime came succeeded him made some changes towards capitalist economy why did khrushchev do this because definitely he didn't want to lose any satellite country okay so this is the pattern that uh sovietization took place and any resistance to uh sovietization okay we'll maybe we'll discuss so tell me is this clear to you could khrushchev have behaved differently hmm? deepika what do you say so he could have hmm? he couldn't have he could have or couldn't have could have okay how you mean he would have allowed uh, hungary to go out of warsa and then would he remain in power if he did so no sir he would not remain in power he wouldn't have that is a problem and he may not have wanted also he may not how he may not he he didn't want to affect the system this is how finally um uh, independence or any talk of change in eastern european countries came to be perceived as threats to the existence of ussr because moving away from communism meant moving towards usa so ussr finally was not in a position to grant independence or not in a position to approve any changes in the east european countries okay is that clear any questions it's clear hmm it's clear okay fine next i'll only i'm going to do only two developments cuban missile crisis and break spring and then there's over okay any anything else you want to ask karim are you clear case yes sir okay sir hmm fine uh next uh first i will do something
Okay. Uh, that was about 1956 development. Similar thing happened much later in 1968. We're not moving chronologically in Czechoslovakia. In Czechoslovakia, crisis took place during Brezhnev time. Brezhnev ruled between 1964 and 82. Alexander Dubce promised reforms, forced out a Stalinist leader. He wanted less centralized economy, relaxation of censorship, and some role to political parties, though very subordinate. And he called it socialism with a human face. These changes were called Prague Spring. Okay. And one change from Nag Najee in 1956 was that he said he would remain within Soviet bloc. So uh, Alexander uh, Dubse, Dubse did not, was not questioning the Warsaw. He was only calling for socialism within a human face, with a human face. But then Brezhnev would not have anything of this. Because Brezhnev believed that we don't know where things would end. You may talk about human face. It is not clear what that human face is and whether communism or socialism can have human face. That is an issue. Half a million troops marched. And do che taken to Moscow and forced to make concessions and finally replaced in 1969. But this is far less bloody than Budapest of 1956. Why? Because these people thought there was no point. And so they conceded. So few people died, unlike in Austria, sorry, in Hungary. So what do these things suggest? They suggest that any changes in these countries would invite Soviet tanks. And America or NATO was not going to come to their aid at all. It was very clear. Because coming to their aid might be an invitation to World War III, which nobody wanted. Okay. But one very important clash point took place when Khrushchev was there, and that took place when J.F. Kennedy was American president. This is what is called. Cuban Missile Crisis. Cuban Missile Crisis was the crisis that, uh, that brought the world to the brink of nuclear exchange. So those tense days were considered the most dangerous days that the mankind faced. What was the context? The context was uh, this was the context. USSR kept missiles in Cuba, nuclear missiles. And US found them in October 1962 and shot. USA's confidence was that USSR was not in a position to attack nuclear with a nuclear weapon from its land or from its satellite countries. Okay, so USA was safe, but USSR was not safe. Because USA's missiles were, were kept 
very close to USSR, USSR, and also range of US missiles was much longer, and also they were there in Turkey and other places. So um, there was a missile inequality between US and USSR, inequality in terms of technology, inequality in terms of um, accessibility. So when Cuba, um, when in Cuba, these changes in 1959, Fidel Castro overthrew US backed um, full Batista government. So Cuba came out of US influence. US banned sugar imports. Okay, and then Castro took US firms, uh, sorry, Castro nationalized US firms, and then Castro took USSR site and USSR promised to buy half the sugar. So basically by 1959, Cuba moved from USA sphere of influence to USSR influence. And Castro was a committed communist. Okay. And USA definitely did not, did not want to have a communist country so close to its shore. It was Eisenhower who ordered CIA to overthrow the regime. CIA used to do such operations without any approval of the Congress. It is not that the Congress discussed and then it gave power to CIA, no. CIA would do such things helping the, as per the president's instructions. But the actual coup took place in April 19, actual effort at the replacement took place in April 1961, by the time J.F. Kennedy became the president and it became a fiasco. Okay. So, coup was approved by Eisenhower, but it was it supposed to be executed finally it finally it it failed in kennedy's time um, so that was american context uh, so after that uh, ussr placed its missiles um, castro wanted it because um, with US missiles, with USSR missiles, USA won't attack. That was the calculation. Um, but then it was a very risky thing uh, because um, USA was not supposed to know that there were nuclear missiles and if it knew it would attack first and why would it uh, keep quiet? So they have hidden it for some time and when USA got to know they were shocked because it was shocked and and uh, USA uh, Kennedy announced that the missiles were placed and it was unacceptable and then uh, Khrushchev was asked to remove and whether Khrushchev would remove was an issue and what would Kennedy do if Khrushchev was not willing to remove, that was an issue. Would Kennedy strike Cuba? And if it strikes Cuba, then there might be retaliation, which would lead to a nuclear clash. And what would be the damage of such a nuclear exchange? So these were very serious threats. But Kennedy chose instead of airstrike, he chose a novel blockade. Block it. And so it means Cuba was blocked. And would USSR try to breach this blockade and would this result in a war? That was another question. But then, US Soviet ships went back. Okay, and agreement was reached where US promised not to attack Cuba 
this was publicly agreed and secretly america agreed to remove american missiles in turkey okay so in the end khrushchev and kennedy managed to avert the nuclear exchange in that sense it was good but who brought the crisis so it's thought that it was khrushchev who brought the crisis first and this retreat was considered shameful so apart from many other domestic developments which uh, communist um, leaders did not approve of the way uh, cuban missile crisis was handled led to khrushchev being forced into retirement in 1964 okay so that was cold war up to khrushchev next any questions that's what my presentations are over anand you have any questions no sir uh, i listened to this for the first time actually i was digesting all this okay okay fine fine takes time mm. karim clear yes sir the cuban sir. missile crisis was asked in the examination mm. okay next hmm okay tell me deepika is it clear yes sir fine okay so that was still brezhnev when brezhnev came okay so next topic is end of cold war okay up to 90s and uh, we will do it on uh,